How to Make Reflections in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you different ways to create reflections to where it, it looks like your uh, artwork is reflecting off of a, say, a, a shiny surface of some sort, like a marble floor or something like that. Um, and we're going to do different techniques. So um, kind of stick around to the end because it's going to get a little bit more complicated as we go. And I highly suggest you look at my previous two tutorials, which are four ways to reflect objects in Adobe Illustrator and how to diagonally reflect with the reflect tool. Um, and then come back to this one. I think you'll be able to understand everything I'm doing because I will use some of those techniques in this video. So the first thing I want to show is kind of if you have a logo that um, is just one color or text or something like that. Let's just go with solid black. It could be solid red. It could be solid blue, whatever. But you don't have multiple colors in the artwork and you don't have any gradients or anything like that. It's very, very simple artwork. So let's just grab this. Um, selecting it with the selection tool, coming over here to reflect tool, you can hit hotkey O, and then you can hold alt. Your cursor should look like this. It should have like little ellipses in the bottom right corner. Go ahead and click while that's held. That will bring up the reflect dialog options here. And you've got uh, horizontal selected, which is good. Make sure preview is, is selected. And then click on copy. That will create a copy of your artwork. I'm going to select that copy and click and drag holding shift until they meet. Really, I don't have to be perfect on this. Um, just kind of getting close. And then uh, I'm going to hit control shift and the left bracket to send that to the back. I'm going to come over here to my gradient tab. And if you don't see any of the tabs I over have over here, just come up to window and you'll find them uh, there. You might have a different layout as well. I like to go with Essentials Classic, which is... Uh, workspace and essentials classic but I also make some changes so anyway um, side note grab this go ahead and click on the gradient tab here um, to create a, a gradient I want this color to be uh, the same all across so here it's it's gonna be black it's gonna be black yep it's black in both places that's great make it about 30% mm, opacity on one knob and on the other one, let's make it zero. And then let's go 90 degrees. That's exactly what we want. If it doesn't look quite right, you might try reverse gradient because you might have it looking like this. And that's just a quick way to swap the sides without doing it manually. Um, so once you have it here, the cool thing is you can change the position of the 0% opacity or the 30% opacity or whatever. And then you can come over here and change this slider, which kind of affects the harshness of the transition. Like it may be a stronger transition over here and then gradual as it leaves um, this side, uh, which tends to look pretty natural to me. So I might pull this out and just have this kind of slightly closer to the 30% knob that I made. Uh, maybe make it look like that. I think that looks pretty good. And the cool thing about doing it this way, you can do this with color, but if you're using opacity instead, you can then transfer this over to another colored background and it will keep the, the appearance this, the same. It will allow for that color of the background to bleed through. Um, it might be really cool if you have like, you know, a color like that and maybe the top part's white. Let's just take a look at that. See, something, something like that, I'd have to move this up a little bit better but that could look really cool. Um, just, just so you know, that's, that's what you use that for. So you can uh, basically change the background colors out without having to go back and adjust the colors here in your sliders. Method two is going to be if you have a logo that's a little bit more complex. So as you can see on this one, we've got lots of gradients, lots of objects, different colors. I've got um, feathering techniques. You've got like glossy overlays lots of different transparencies going on like it's it's a lot going on in this in this image and you couldn't just do a simple one color gradient to make it look right so how do you do this one well you start off the same way you're going to select it and then come over to your uh, reflect object tool again hotkey o do the same thing hold alt click that will bring up your dialog box again and go ahead and hit copy it should be the same as what we did previously 
I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit V, hotkey V, just to get my selection tool. Hold Shift as I come up, and we're probably going to have them intersect just a little bit. I'll go ahead and send it to the back as well. And now here's the fun part. Let's create a, a square, and we're going to, it's going to be um, intersecting with the top of our object here. What you want it to do is just cover the object, but not go too far over, just kind of about like that. And you're going to have, you want to, you want a gradient, which I already have because I've been working on this, but if you don't, just go ahead and click, make sure this is set to a gradient. And then you'll want to have probably a, I'm going to fill this with black and you want to do black and white. Um, if you do white, it's going to be wherever it's white, you're going to see the object at a hundred percent opacity and wherever it's black, you're going to see it at zero percent opacity. So I probably want to create about a 76, 75, 70, somewhere in there, and then have this one at 100%. So you'll see a little bit of the object and no object. And so you, what you want to do after you've created that is grab both of these. So I'm clicking and dragging to grab both. Come over to Transparency, and then click Make Mask. And voila, there you go. Now, if you ever want to edit this, these are automatically um, uh, sort of linked together here. Um, what you can do is... If you've got this selected, it's going to automatically be over here on your artwork. But if you click over here, now you can just edit the gradient. So you can come back to gradient and shift things around as you see fit, just like we did uh, on the previous example. And then if you want to come back and just move the artwork, you can come back and move the artwork around like this. And if you want to move the artwork independently of the uh, clipping mask, then you can unclick this and it will move around like so. Now, if you have clip uh, selected here, that means that anything that goes outside of this clipping mask will be invisible. If you have clip, it will look like so. So there you go. One cool thing that you might do um, with these kinds of options, let me just show you real quick. I'm going to link those together so I can move everything together. I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm holding Shift and Alt as I'm dragging to create a copy of those things. And let's just say you unlink this real quick, make sure clip is on, it is, and just drag this down ever so, and then click this again to link them all together. And if you kind of come up here and do like that. Cool thing about doing it this way is it kind of looks like the icons floating above your shiny surface if you do it that way. So that, you know, there's a common plane for both of these that's right here that they're shining on a specific surface down here. But as it gets higher off the ground, it's not reflecting as well because it's not as close to the surface. Just a quick tip on that one. The last example I want to show is if you can create a reflection with text and you want to keep it editable. Um, this doesn't work for all situations, so you'll just see what I mean, but uh, let's dig into it. Uh, this is going to be similar to that previous video I was telling you about, so go back and look at that if you didn't. I'm going to create a vertical line with my line segment tool. Go ahead and give it a black stroke so I can see it. And then do the same thing here. I've got smart guides on to help me with this. But I'm going to go ahead and select both. And I'm going to align them to the artboard like so. I'm going to go to layers. I'm going to create new. I'm going to lock this layer. And I'm going to just hide it because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to create another uh, line segment down the middle. Go ahead and align that to the artboard in the center. Good. I'm going to go ahead and hit reflect here. I'm typing up letters. Let's see. Nice, big, fat, bold font. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and add this as well. Another line segment to this part. And I'm going to align it to the center just so I know where I can go with my text. So I want to bring my text to about here. Let's see. About there's good. Um, next thing I want to do is grab everything. You can also come over here to layer and just select everything, make sure you've got it all. And then come up to effect, distort and transform, transform. And we want to reflect on the Y axis. And I want one copy. And then hit OK. Now the next thing I want to do is come over here to these lines 
and just hide them. I don't need them anymore. So we just want to look at this. What we need to do is create a box here, like so. I need to create a gradient, like so. Let's draw, let's see, let's bring this to mm, something maybe more, yeah, like a dark red. We'll do that. And then I'll go 90, maybe reflect that a bit. I think that looks good. Drop that in the back. I'm going to select my text, go over to Pathfinder, and then hit Make Compound Path. And then I'm going to select both elements and hit Make Clipping Mask. And really, we need to do this in its own layer. So let's come over here to go New Layer, because we don't want this repeating. We're going to come over here like this. And we're going to give it a, a gradient. We're going to change this color to, let's do white, and then more white. Are you working? There we go. Sometimes you get these knobs over here. If you get extra knobs, you can just click and hold down and that will get rid of the knobs for you. I'm going to make this um, 30 and this will be 100. Whoops. And this will be 100. Bring that in. Let's do maybe a 90. And let's do less than 30. Let's do 80. And do like this. Uh, the only unfortunate thing about doing it this way is you can't change the color of the background you know you're going to have to change the color of this overlapping gradient every time you do that but what's really neat is if you needed it to be consistent across other words now you can just type it and it will always look the same and um, if you were to let's say we had a really long word let's go uh, vector made like so well as you can see it, it, it cut off right here because if I double click on this, you'll see that the, and if I select what's back here, which it's invisible, but just know that you've got this um, gradient square that we made a while back. Now I can change that by selecting it. If I don't select, you know, select, if you select the text, you're not going to get that option. So you've got to make sure that you either select the text first and then shift click over it to catch what's in the back or just guess where it is and click on it it's probably overlapping your text a little bit so and then if I double click to get out of that you'll see that it it created the appropriate looking um, copy down here so hey guys that's the tutorial in a nutshell leave a comment down below hit that like button subscribe and all those good things and I will see you guys in the next video